the whole gang were seen as latter-day Robin Hoods because they stole money that, in the eyes of many of the public, you know, didn't belong to anybody other than the establishment. And in fact, it was the establishment that um, took revenge in a way, as it was seen at the time, by giving them um, very long prison sentences, 30, 30 years. Um, but I think uh, Biggs became the Ronnie Biggs became the most famous or infamous, um, and the, perhaps the most romanticised, because apart from being seen as a Robin Hood figure, of course he went to prison in 1964, a year after the robbery, but then had this very dramatic, made this very dramatic escape, climbing a rope ladder, climbing over the wall of Wandsworth Prison, and then dropping down into a furniture van, um, and then disappearing first to Australia. Um, and then turning up in Brazil, in Rio, where he, the perception was that he led, again, a very romantic, exotic life. The reality, of course, was that it was nothing like that. And, um, you know, he found it very difficult to survive, uh, became a tourist attraction, quite demeaning in a way, but always very jovial about it. But meeting tourists, accepting drinks, accepting their tips for signing pound notes. That's the kind of thing that he used to do simply to make enough money to survive. And, of course, uh, he became very ill, came back in 2001 with the Sun newspaper because he was so ill, was made to do more years in prison. I mean, he knew that that would happen. Um, but the last few years of his life, he's been a very cut a very sad figure. He's had a couple of strokes, um, other illnesses. And for the last few years, whenever... I've seen him. He's been in a wheelchair. He's been unable to speak, uh, unable to feed himself. And but for the you know great care and attention of his son Michael, um, you know he may not have survived this long.